there. Yeah, it's the old... Uh... Who is, Lee Atwater used to do that. Anyway, the new charge for the right that Hillary Clinton bears responsibility for those kidnapped, kidnapped girls over in Nigeria based on her time at the State Department. Here's Newt Gingrich. He's always an opportunist. Hillary Clinton's leadership as Secretary of State regarding the Nigerian terrorist group Boko Haram could become at least as serious an issue as her decision surrounding the attack on the U.S. consulate, it's not a consulate, in Benghazi, you to get that straight. He said it was indefensible that the State Department didn't designate Boko Haram a terrorist group and, quote, a thorough investigation of the decision process that protected Boko Haram from 2011 until 2013 could be devastating. By the way, Newt Gingrich, Newtster, the fact is they named the three top leaders to the terrorist of Boko, Boko Haram. They named them to the terrorists. Meanwhile, Andrew McCarthy writing in the National Review, Mrs. Clinton, like the Obama administration more broadly, believes that appeasing of Islamists avoiding actions that might give them offense, slamming Americans who provoke them, promotes peace and stability. Benghazi to the brother in Egypt to Boko Haram and beyond, Hillary Clinton's tenure at the State Department was a disaster. More ridiculous still, listen to what Rush Limbaugh said just today. The Boko Haram leader, or whoever Boko Haram had perform on video, is a good looking guy. This is why Mrs. Clinton wouldn't call this group a terror group, because they're black. Can't afford to do this. This is how surface conscious the left is. We can't call them terrorists because they look like African Americans, and we just can't go there. I have never heard more hogwash in 30 seconds. I, I've got to go to Stephanie, a, a female, and as a woman. He, he accuses Hillary of having some sort of sexual attraction or romantic attraction to the head of Boko Haram. Because, well, because he says, and Rush doesn't usually talk like this. This is getting a little odd here. That he's good looking, he's black, and he looks like an African American. Well, I don't really, I didn't get a good look at the guy. But what is this about? You talk about, I don't know what to say, sexism, weirdism, Rush Bowism. I mean, he's, I don't even think he's good looking. What is that? How do you get that out of this picture? I, I, it is shocking. It, the Republicans, all of them, they have nothing to say. So they are going to just the bottom of the bottom here on attacks, pulling anything they can out. Because the truth is, everybody knows that her tenure of secretary, as Secretary of State was excellent. And on the record, you know, month after month since she left, folks have been talking about how great of Does a leader. Does she need a war room right now? Even if she's not running, doesn't she need somebody to defend her, even if she doesn't run? The, the Republicans are going too far, and the American no, people are No, I'm asking you, doesn't that. she need a war room right now? Make news. Stephanie no. Shriok, <laughs> doesn't she need a war room? I mean, I've always thought the war room was one hell of a documentary on politics, because it how uh, George and James and those guys down there and women down there did such a great sure. job of firing back, instant response, first responders. As we've learned from Dukakis and we've learned from John Kerry with the Swift Boat, if you don't throw the crap back fast, it absorbs. Your thoughts as a pro. But or can't you no, say it as a potential no, campaign no, manager? You can't well, there's say There's no it? campaign. There's no candidate yet. Well, what about you know, a they, war they're room? They're trying to do everything they Shouldn't can. Shouldn't there be a I mean, war she's room? Got a, she's got a lot of friends out there that are out uh, speaking on her behalf. And here's the thing. She's going to go out and and do her book tour and really talk about okay. the truth of what happened. And that's what's going to be the important here. The trouble is, even a great and book think, can't keep up with the fact of what they're throwing at her. How oh, can she gonna, possibly gonna have Nigeria? And and the Boca Haram and her book to her, Howard. She'll do a great job on the book route. I know she will. But yeah. they're, they're doing, they'll have two more things by the time she hits the road to throw at her. Your thoughts? Well, since I'm not a campaign operative and, <laughs> and, and just an observer That's of your things, strength, Howard. <laughs> and, and, a report, and a reporter who's covered a lot of campaigns, uh, I know that attacks uh, unanswered are to some extent attacks accepted. And I said a little earlier, Chris, that this is functionally already a presidential campaign. So I guess I have to say, and I would say, that she does need some more loud and vigorous and specific and caustic defenders yeah. uh, on this kind of stuff. Uh, because this is what, what, what Rush Limbaugh and these others are doing is playing with very deep fears and resentments in the American public. And they need to be called out on it by people who have respect. Uh, in American society. What they're doing is that they're saying that Hillary Clinton is an appeaser. You heard that comment yeah. from the guy at the National Review. She's an appeaser. She's an appeaser of Islamists. Uh
In other words, she's soft on this stuff, and 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 that she has she has thought that that soft power and nice words are somehow going to make their way in the world, which really isn't Hillary Clinton's worldview. No. Uh, really, no, she's, she's a fighter. She, She's a That's fighter, right. and, yeah. and, and she has to have people answering for her on that. I know she doesn't want to do it herself because okay. she's not right, in the campaign go. yet. Yeah. To make your points, here's some yeah. t and, and to make the point to Stephanie, too, how serious this is, more examples now what I call the preventive war against Hillary Clinton this weekend. This is all brand-new stuff now. Right. Senator Marco Rubio had some very tough words for her. Let's listen to him. I'm sure she's going to go around bragging about her time in the State Department. She's also going to have to be held accountable for its failures, whether it's the failed reset with Russia or the failure in Benghazi that actually cost lives. So what grade do you give her as Secretary of State? I don't think she has a passing grade. Um, in fact, if you, you think look she's at, an ass. Yeah, because if you look at the diplomacy that was pursued in her time in, in the State Department, it has failed everywhere in the world. So here's what I would say. If she is going to run on her record as Secretary of State, she's also going to have to answer for its massive failures. She's a, he's the purest politician I've ever seen, by the way. Pure politics. He just wants to win. Senator Rand Paul continued to go after uh, Secretary Clinton over Benghazi. Here's more of Paul. This is about judgment. And we're talking about should we, should we as a country have a commander in chief who didn't provide adequate security in Libya, didn't send reinforcements, and then gave us nothing but spin? My opinion is that Hillary Clinton has precluded herself from ever being considered for that position. Meanwhile, as I said, Bill Crystal seems to be declaring war on her whole role as Secretary of State. Let's watch. So when we discussed Hillary Clinton at the beginning of this panel, Donna carefully said Secretary Clinton. I think that's absolutely right. Let's have the debate on Secretary of State of the United States, Hillary Clinton. What happened in Libya? We intervened. I supported that intervention. I think Adam did too. too. In, 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 in the 2011, what happened in Libya over the next year such that Benghazi got to the situation it was at? Why did Hillary Clinton say the video caused the terrorist attack when she knew, she must have known, that it didn't? Bottom line to you, Stephanie, what do you think the impact of this early attack and perhaps relentless attack from here on out is going to mean for Secretary Clinton, her decision to run, her ability to run and win? Well, she's going to make her decision, you know, you know, with a lot of factors in this. And she, she's been through this fire before. It's not like she hasn't been attacked before. I think what we're, what we're really going to start seeing here is, is voters who are, who are just disgusted by these nonstop attacks, particularly by a Republican Party that refuses to talk about anything the voters yeah. actually care about. And 2014 is here. We have an election in November where the voters and everything I have seen, and I'm sure they've seen the same polling, is about economics, economic opportunity, yeah, okay. equal pay for women, minimum wage. They are missing the boat. They're, they are so afraid of her. They're trying to get her out now. And, and their taxes are part. just not going to work. They could also be effective even if they're scared. Sometimes you're most effective when you're most scared. By the way, I think attack ads work. I think attacks work. You've got to throw it right back in their face or you lose the best. After that was Bill Clinton. Thank you, Howard Feynman. Thank you, Stephanie Shriak. Coming up. Thanks,